So, vinyl records. You can find them everywhere. An interesting way to listen to music, with it literally being engraved in a big plastic disc, played back through a vibrating needle. The future is now, I guess. It's a fun time, really. Another way for music fans to really immerse themselves in their favorite albums and have a physical piece of their favorite artist, it's always cool to see what they come up with for designs and colors and patterns and such. In the last video, we saw some pretty pricey stuff, and I said if that got 400 likes, I would do another one. And with only 2k views, we actually managed to hit the goal. Like, that's insane. Thanks, everyone. Looks like you got some work to do, bud. And work I did. Compiling, adding, and pulling from my list of even more expensive music that is sure to make you go... Huh. There's some crazy stuff in here I'm sure you'll enjoy, it, even if you don't know any of these guys, which I highly doubt you won't, but still. So put on your bidding hats, as today we're hitting the auction house, seeing how rich or broke we actually are, not just in Dogecoin, and see if we can actually buy some of the most expensive music records ever, part 2. And hey, leave a like if you're excited. So to start things off, I'm fiending for some head. In a... Radio. Radiohead. Being math experts since 2003, the English alternative rock band that formed all the way back in 1985, the group would go on to have an amazing career selling over 30 million records, creating multiple classics in their genre, and shaping the sound of experimental rock for others along the way. From their critically acclaimed OK Computer to their polarizing, but then later acclaimed, genre-bending follow-up Kid A. We could talk about each one of their projects for hours, but for this segment, we're looking specifically at their 2007 release, In Rainbows, the follow-up to their 2007 three record Hail to the Thief, they would release this independently on their website in rainbows.com where fans could listen to and download the album and pay any amount they wanted or not even pay at all. After a long hiatus, fans were treated to a brand new Radiohead album after four years. After closing their record deal with EMI, the group would use this time to do basically whatever they wanted. Johnny Greenwood would score his own movie soundtrack called Body Song in 2003 and lead singer Tom York would release his own album titled The Eraser in 2006. But in 2005, the group would reconvene once more after a long break to try something new, get back in the studio, and start creating again. Fully labelless. Recording was a little bit hazy, with the group going back and forth on ideas for years, with the whole process being very slow. Recording finally finished near the beginning of 2007, and during all that time, managed to produce 16 songs, only picking 10 for the album. They really had to let it sizzle, you know? And after a healthy promo run, the album would release on October 10th of 2007, receiving critical acclaim, and being released for free on their website. I freaking love this album. From the opening 15 steps of the abrasive body snatchers to the low key and chill tracks nude and videotape, it's a nice time. The album would get a physical release later that year on CD and vinyl separately, but before that, the group would release this limited edition box set on their website consisting of the album on two CDs, the original 10 tracks, and the remaining six made during the sessions, as well as on vinyl. This would also come with a book of more artwork and other things to read and look at. When this came out, this was selling for 40 pounds on their website, around 50 bucks USD. Now, now if you want one of these, in good condition, full of goodies, consider picking up that side newspaper gig as this will run you about $250 to $300. My wallet is in rainbows. Alright, that's pretty pricey, not gonna lie. But it is a box set, so hey, that's to be expected. But we want the solo dolo bites, just the spinny thing. Alright, alright, well you're in luck as next up, we have the experimental music trio that is constantly turning heads. <laughs> Death Grips, the trio that just always makes people go, what the f*** are you listening to? An experimental hip hop group consisting of lead vocalist MC Ride, drummer and producer Zach Hill, and keyboardist Andy Morton, an aggressive bunch. They draw on sounds of punk, rock, electronic, and just noise, releasing their breakout mixtape X Military in 2011 to their debut album The Money Store in 2012. They really made waves in the underground scene that echoes into the mainstream, with their stuff being used in games and TV shows, as well as influencing artists like David Bowie for his final album Black Star in 2016. Their second album also has a peen on the cover. A good chunk of their projects could appear all over these things. Their physical releases can be really scarce at times, to say the least. But for this spot, we'll be looking at their 2013 album Government Plates. 
Releasing in November of 2013, this would be the group's follow-up to their previous record, No Love Deep Web. As after splitting with their label Epic Records, the trio would spend majority of 2013 working on their follow-up and release it later that year for free online. I guess that's the trend for going independent. The project is loud, in your face, aggressive, rock, electronic, classic DG fashion, but this is where it gets juicy as the next year in 2014, the group would press the album to vinyl for the first and, as of this video, the only time for that year's record store day. The vinyl would come with a brand new cover and its own replica license plate of the cover. Pretty neat. What's not pretty neat is that this was limited to only 900 copies distributed across the US and as such has a very hefty price tag. This thing barely pops its head out online and when it does, it's coming for blood, aka your wallet. As if you want a copy of this thing in full with license plate, prepare to cough up anywhere between 6 to 8 hundo. I've even seen it hit the thousands at times, but I don't know if anybody's really buying it at that price. It's gone now, but there was one one time I saw it listed on eBay for almost two grand and then just disappeared, which I can only assume means somebody bought it, which if that's the case, Holy shit, dude. It was either tuition or the grips. Fully understandable. But this isn't even the end. As last up, we have everyone's favorite green-haired face-palming singer. Frank Ocean. I know, he's not an actual ocean, I'm sorry. But he has been making fully grown adults cry in their rooms since 2013. Coming up with rap collective Odd Future in 2010, he's an artist that in many ways turned a lot of heads for his unique and fresh sounding style and his unashamedness to talk about pretty much whatever he wants in his music. Over the years, he would gain a big audience with his work, both with and without Odd Future, starting with his breakout mixtape Nostalgia Ultra in 2011 and his debut album Channel Orange in 2012. After that, Frank would stay low key for the following years to work both on on his next album and do work for other artists. One example being Kanye West on his 2016 album The Life of Pablo. There was a big silence in the Frank camp with sparse singles and snippets to bridge the gap and tie people over. People all over the internet patiently waiting for that full Frank announcement and waiting for an update on his second album whenever he would give it. He first announced that his follow-up would come out in July of 2015 with two versions but as July came and went there was nothing to be seen. People wondering if he was just trolling or didn't want to release any projects anymore but that all changed in 2016 when the world was treated to not one, but two Frankie albums, those being Endless and Blonde, releasing a day apart from each other. Both really solid works, obviously one a bit more known than the other. Is he gonna be that guy who explains again how Frank released Endless just to get out of his record deal so he could really release Blonde? I guess, I think I just did. Yep, a whole project made up of material spanning all the way back to 2013. Endless would start out as a live stream and come out as a visual album exclusively on Apple Music, but got no real promo or press at its release, as all the attention was shifted to Frank's real follow-up, Blonde, with pop-up shop, full promo and everything, the actual follow-up to Channel Orange. But that's a whole story for another day. What we're really here for is what would come out a couple months later during Black Friday and Cyber Monday of 2016 and 2017 respectively, as on Black Black Friday, Frank would release Blonde on vinyl exclusively on his website for that day only. First as a solo endeavor, then Midway teamed up with record label XL to meet demand. A first pressing with new black cover art looking pretty snazzy. And the next year, the previous project, Endless, would also get its own pressing with a holographic cover and was released on his website for Cyber Monday, this one available for a little over a week. Now with a limited run of such a high demand artist, I don't gotta tell you that these things just went to the moon. Starting with Endless, if you want a copy of this bad boy, start picking up those extra shifts and be prepared to hand over around $400. Now that's a lot of money for a vinyl, but what about you? Well with this project being the real eye catcher, it's no surprise that this would be a bit more than endless, but if you want a Black Friday edition of Blonde as of right now, both on eBay and on music site Discogs, a sealed version of this puppy will fetch you anywhere from $800 to well over $1000 on eBay hovering around the $1200 mark. Damn! <laughs> These were $35 when they came out. Endless even came out on a VHS too, but even that'll cost you around $200. do not worry Frank, you can hook me up, feel free. There are bootlegs online as well, with different colors, but even those will cost you around $150. Why must you do this to me, Frankie? Oh well, guess I'll start my side gig. Jeez, man, what expensive pieces of plastic and cardboard. And I know what you're thinking. Come on, dude, is that really it? Of course it's not. There's so much more I can cover. I'm trying to empty my fake wallet. And we can keep this series going, but only if we hit the like goal, this time being five hundo. But until then, what do you think about expensive records in general? Or even the ones mentioned here? Are they worth their asking price, or is it a stretch? Leave a comment, I'd love to know. And subscribe if you enjoyed it. Also, the outro's here now. See ya!